All right, here with Hayes Carline, our Jaguars beat reporter, and you hear him every weekday afternoon on the Frangie Show. You're on 1010 XL 92.5 FM, and you also can read his work on the Jacksonville Jaguars on his Jaguars blog that's presented by Mr. Reuter on 1010 XL. And Hayes, a big opportunity for the Jags this week, and you just recently wrote about how the Jags can put a miserable pass behind them with a victory on Sunday against Philip Rivers and the San, the Los Angeles Chargers, almost at San Diego. That's yeah, that's the- right. I've been doing it all week, <laughs> so don't feel bad. Yeah, the uh, the Chargers come in here with two kind of not adversaries necessarily, not both of them at least, but Philip Rivers, the obviously legendary quarterback, probably the most underrated player of his generation, and uh, and former Jaguar coach Gus Bradley. So. Uh, adversaries in two different ways. Rivers has dominated the Jaguars uh, throughout his career, but particularly over the last four years, throwing 12 touchdowns and no interceptions. Gus wasn't trying to be an adversary, but it just sort of was with how his tenure went here, 14 and 48 before he was fired last year. And uh, this is an opportunity now for the Jaguars, if they can win Sunday, to kind of put you know two ghosts in the past a little bit as they continue to march towards the playoffs at what would be six and three, and again guaranteed to be tied atop the AFC South, depending on what the Titans do with Cincinnati. But this is a, certainly a big opportunity. But I think it's more if you lose the game, if Rivers is able to still have success against this defense that's totally different than when he saw it in week two last year. And if Gus Bradley is able to cook up a defensive scheme that is able to hold the Jaguar offense down and the Chargers walk out of Everbank Field on Sunday with a victory, I think that'll be very hard for the Jaguars to stomach. Yeah, but as you mentioned, this is a totally different defense and a really confident defense as well as we've seen throughout really the past two weeks. You know, we've seen Jalen Ramsey and, you know, how he addressed the whole A.J. Green thing from last Sunday and just the confidence he had, and also that confidence has been a huge influence on this defense this week as you've been able to talk with some of these players in the locker room as well. Right, and uh, Aaron Colvin sort of gave the quote of the week uh, when I asked him about Gus Bradley's impact on his career because remember, Colvin was injured at the Senior Bowl with Bradley coaching. Uh, Bradley said, look, we're going to come get you. Don't worry about this injury. The Jaguars take him in the fourth round of the draft. So very unique backstory between player and coach there. Uh, So I asked Colvin about, you know, just what Bradley meant uh, impactfully to his career. And he said, ask me that next week. It's about beating that ass this week. And, uh, (laughs) you know, really, I think that is just the tone of where this locker room is. And and I understand it. Again, we talked about it was week two last year when Rivers dominated the Jaguars throwing four touchdowns and no interceptions. Look what's different. Calais Campbell, Barry Church, A.J. Boye, all in free agency, acquiring defensive tackle Marcel Darius right before the trade deadline. The, the recent uh, blossoming of Jalen Ramsey, Unique Ngakwe, and Miles Jack, second-year players. And then you're seeing guys like Malik Jackson, remains really a strong player. Pazlesny, Avery Jones, still very reliable. And then you've got guys like Telvin Smith, Aaron Colvin, Tashawn Gibson, and Dante Fowler, all taking their games to another level this year. So I just don't see a lot of areas in which Rivers is going to have a lot of successful matchups to operate. And again, that's what it comes down to in this league is winning individual matchups. Just not sure the Chargers are going to be able to do that on Sunday. And one final aspect too. Past couple weeks, Blake Bortles has been playing very solid. And some people are starting to take notice about Blake Bortles. Can he continue that trend this week? It'll be really interesting to see because this is sort of a a chess match that, that sort of goes beyond the normal Sunday because Blake has gone against Gus Bradley's defense for basically four years and vice versa. Gus Bradley knows everything there is to know about Blake Bortles. Uh, He doesn't have to watch film. Uh, He knows exactly what his weaknesses are and exactly what his strengths are. So it will be fascinating to see how it works. But again, I think the Jaguars plan and why they're being so successful is they're keeping everything simple. And it's a very simple plan. Yes, they're going to establish the run with Leonard Fournette, But what they're doing early in these games is they are attacking with the pass because teams just are not expecting it. These teams are thinking all week about stopping Leonard Fournette, stopping that ground game that ranks first in the league, and they just are sort of dismissing Blake Bortles and the Jaguar receivers. And the Jaguars are wisely taking advantage of that. So again, I would target, if I'm the Jaguars, let's try and get 125 yards through the air on these first two drives to start the game. And then once you've done that, you can then rely on number 27, 
to go to work. So I'm intrigued to see if Nathaniel Hackett still, you know, bases his play calling off of that. But that's what I think we're going to see because until a defense shows that they can stop it, uh, I just think the Jaguars are going to go back to that well. So look for Blake Bortles to try and get going early and then watch Leonard Fournette take over. And I'll be surprised if the rookie, who has not played now in four weeks, I would not be surprised if he goes over 170 yards against what I believe to be a suspect Chargers run defense. He is Hayes Carline. Again, you hear him every weekday afternoon on the Frangie Show, and you could read his work as our Jaguars beat reporter on 1010XL.com, his Jaguars blog presented by Mr. Reuter. Hayes, as always, thanks for the time. Thank you.